Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Tarot Tea Time. As you can see, we are in the guest room setup. It's a little bit more uh, amateur, but I'm here because I'm here with Sunny, our little foster dog. <laughs> and we went on a run, and then I was like, you know, we're just going to do this from bed and chill. Hopefully, he'll come on camera. You guys can see him in a little bit. He has filled out so much. He's looking amazing. And I know it's partly because all the love and support that you guys have been just showering on him, all the good intentions and well wishes, but we're doing great. How are you guys? How is your weekend? Let me know in the comments if anybody's having trouble hearing me. I am just using uh, the Mac audio, which we used last time and it was really good. So I'm just going to go with it. Hey, Sage Moon, how are you? How was your weekend? Did anybody experience anything with that eclipse yet? Have you felt any shifts? Anything new coming through yet? Any positive new developments? I know we have like six months, but I don't know. Some people's new developments have popped up quick. Hi, Penny D. How are you? Ah, the gang's all showing up. And we have a lot of tea tonight. Holy smokes. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Yes, everybody's coming through. What did everybody get up to this weekend? I want to hear all the tea from you guys. We'll do a little shuffling while we catch up. There's a lot of tea. There's a lot of tea tonight. It's good. I like what we got going on. We've got some requests. Um, Penny wants to know about the royal family. Definitely time for a check-in on them. St uh, wait, Davis, voice of Davis, but now Davis Lundr Lundrigan, 1100. I love that name, Davis. Uh, wants to know about Suki Waterhouse. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about their announcement that she and Robert Pattinson are having a baby girl. Just read a little bit about their family life and send them good vibes. And then Lizzie G, of course, wants to know about her dose. She says she needs her dose of Zac Efron. <laughs> and then a good reminder that Taylor's album comes out in a few days. We are going to have to analyze the heck out of that. Um, I can't wait. There's going to be so much good Taylor Swift tea once April 19th hits and we get to gossip a little bit, spill a little tea about all of the lyrics of the songs. I'm so excited. Okay. What's everybody saying? Beth, you're back. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm sending you the biggest hug. I know you've had a lot going on and I've been thinking about you. You've been on my mind. So I hope everything's going great. Uh, looking good in red and black. Oh, thank you, Beth. Okay. <laughs> uh, Oh, Lily says hi to the pups. Hi, Lily Rue. How are you? Yes, I did say, how are you to Lily Rue? <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to get a pet psychic to come on the podcast. And by trying, I mean, I'm going to get one, but I'm looking at like, I'm doing research and finding like the best ones, which I think that's going to be very interesting. And I was doing some research last night and apparently you can telepathically communicate with dogs. I don't know. We're going to let the pet psychic get into it, but that's going to be fun. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. Good weekend yard work. Penny, oh my gosh. If it was as beautiful there as it was in Kansas City, a great weekend for yard work and anything outdoors. Good for you. That always feels so good. You feel like so accomplished. All right. Well, while everybody's catching up and saying hi, aw, it's so nice to see everybody. I am going to start pouring a little bit of tea, but feel free to keep on greeting each other. It's just so fun to get together Sunday nights. All right, let's go ahead and start with something light and breezy, something cute and happy. Um, and this is uh, Voices of Davis, her comment that Suki Waterhouse announced at Coachella that she and Robert Pattinson had a baby girl. Now, a lot of people are curious about their relationship. I feel like both can be relatively private. They're such a cute couple. So we're going to do a little positivity reading on the love and positive things coming towards uh, Suki Waterhouse and Robert Pattinson. That'll be nice to just kind of get us going with some light tea. Because I think the tea is going to get a little bit heavier, okay? Especially with Penny's request about the royal family. I do have my thoughts. All I'll say is, I don't, it's looking wild, okay? Anyway, <laughs> so S Suki Waterhouse and Robert Pattinson, let's just get a little bit of positivity about their family, about all the good things that they have going on, maybe things that we don't know about their relationship. A lot of people want to know more about them. So let's pull one card for Robert Pattinson and how he shows up in his relationship in a positive light. 
Temperance. Okay, I love it. And that's a little surprising because a lot of people do still think of him as uh, Edward the Vampire. <laughs> but he's not like that at all, of course. He's actually represented by the temperance card, which is all about balance. So he's actually someone who is extremely balanced in his relationship, which is why I think he's been able to build such a strong, a strong and solid foundation with Suki Waterhouse. Um, he's very much that type of person who doesn't get angered easily. He can really um, use his patience. That's going to come in handy as a new father, I'm sure. But he's someone that can be counted on and who doesn't fly off the handle. Definitely a person who is steady and reliable. So that's very positive, that temperance card. And then let's see. Hi, Liz. How's it going? Oh my gosh, Penny Jack Ryan is so good. So good. I'm waiting for the next season to come out. Just like, when is it coming out? <laughs> it's such a good show. That's amazing. Okay. So let's see. Sage Moon says, I'm a sucker for Rob because he's a double Taurus with a Cancer Moon. Oh my gosh, Sage Moon. And doesn't that sound like someone who would be represented by the Temperance card? Because, it, like, Double Taurus is very grounded and stable. Oh my God, I love it. And then Cancer Moon, extremely emotional and like, um, but emotionally grounded and connected with the moon at home in Cancer and like so nurturing. Oh, I love it. He's going to be a great father. That is so cute. Sage Moon says, so happy for him and Suki. He'd be a good girl, dad protected, but sensitive. Yes, Sage Moon. Oh my God, 100%. I love it. He's that temperate angelic positive energy in the life of his family members that's beautiful i love it thank you for that extra layer sage moon that's so interesting hi voice of davis we're actually doing your request we're talking about robert pattinson and suki waterhouse and i'm doing a positivity reading um we got temperance for rob just talking about how solid and stable he is and then now we are going to talk about suki waterhouse what her vibe is. Let's just see what's going on with her. Very sweet. So happy for them. How is she in her relationship? Something good coming her way. Oh, I love it. Okay. Knight of Wands. So she's actually the Knight of Wands in this situation, meaning that she's someone who has a lot of passionate energy. She is going to be the type of person that is going to take naturally to all of the activity and the things that come with being a mother. Um, I'm sure that that makes your days really long. You're getting up early. You're getting up throughout the night. She is someone who is very motivated though, and is actually going to thrive in this chapter of her life. She's going to feel emotionally connected and passionate about this whole motherhood um, process. And so this is going to be something that's really good for her. She's one of those people that it's just going to kind of kick her into a higher gear. So Knight of Wands for Suki Waterhouse. Love that for her. He's definitely the more grounded one. She's the more, uh, I would say, exciting one, if you will. Like she brings excitement <laughs> into their lives, probably keeps him on his toes. But together they make a really positive pair of both grounded and excitement and like expansive. She keeps them dreaming big and he keeps their feet on the ground so that um, they have both stability and fun, which I love that. So sending them a bunch of positive well wishes. That is so sweet. Very happy for them. Thank you, Voice of Davis, for that request. That was like such a fun way to start off the tea. Okay, what's everybody saying? <laughs> Melissa, that's going to be a beautiful child too, 1,000%. Oh my gosh. Just their genes together. Wow. Aw, I know. So sweet. Okay. All right. So next we have, let's see. Lizzie G wants to know about... A little bit of a Zac Efron update. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys have been hearing anything about him. I haven't heard much about him lately. Um, I'm sure Lizzie has, though, because you probably keep up with him. But we'll just pull a couple cards and see what's going on for him. A little Zac Efron update. We're going to start light. And then we're going to ramp up <laughs> to some more stories. But for now, I love this. Zac Efron update. What's going on with Lizzie's love, Zac Efron? Oh, okay. Interesting. So Lizzie, you'd probably be the best person to give any additional insight into this. Not sure what's going on with his career or with his 
emotional life, but we have the eight of cups in reverse here, meaning that he just went through a period of walking away from some sort of emotional situation. I wonder if he just went through a breakup, but he's overcoming it. Or if it wasn't a breakup, then ooh, it's just been tumultuous. I would say in his emotional life is Liz. Okay. Liz, is he <laughs> Liz goes, that's me. Liz, has Zac Efron been in a relationship lately? Do you know if he's like broken up with somebody? Because this is talking about that. He's been single for a while as far as we know. Mm, as far as we know. Yes, yes, Liz. Betty says, go get him. Liz, tis the Aries season. Venus is in Aries right now. Now is, is the time to seize the day and ask that person out. Shoot him a DM. Why not? Okay. I would say this would be a good time, actually, because uh, it looks like he just got over a breakup or just like a really unstable sort of connection because this is the cups here. Interesting. Let's get another card. My man, <laughs> even though I'm too young for him. Oh, oh gosh, Liz. Well, you're gonna have to wait a little bit then. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Six of Pentacles. Okay, so this is about generosity. I would say that he's kind of in a phase right now where he's learning more about generosity, friendship, uh, very focused on work, but not so much love life. I think that there's been a period of, I just got goosebumps, so confirmation. There's been a period in his love life that's actually been pretty, like I said, tumultuous. And so he's in a phase where he's kind of healing and connecting with different parts of himself. You know, like you go through a breakup, you're not trying to like jump back out there and start dating someone immediately. Um, you focus on your hobbies, your friendships, other things. So that's what he's doing. He's in a phase where he's really focused on his hobbies, friendships, trying to continue to grow professionally. So that's just kind of the update on him. Pretty low key. I think he's just kind of doing, doing him, you know, doing his own life, doing his thing. Gigi says his ex Vanessa got married and is pregnant. I don't know if that has to do with it. LOL. Hmm. Interesting Gigi. Well, definitely talking about whatever the state of cups in reverse is, there was definitely an emotional experience not long ago. That could have, that could have been I mean, that could have a little bit of something to do with it. Definitely a period of turmoil. So thank you for adding that. Um, thank you for adding that, Gigi. I think that that would create a little bit of a feeling, right? Let's pull a card to see how did... The, let's just... We're going to get a little messy now. How did Zag Efron feel when Vanessa Hudgens got married? How did Zach Efron feel... And how does he feel about her, like, just, you know, moving on with her life? I don't know if they, wasn't it a really long time ago that they dated? I'm just curious. Let's see how he felt, though. Three of Pentacles. Okay, I think he was actually pretty happy for her. This Three of Pentacles is all about, like, collaboration, working together. I don't know how serious his relationship was with her. But I would say based on this card, whatever seriousness was associated with their connection, I don't think that... Um, yeah, I just don't think that it was, even if it was a little serious, it's dissipated because this is really about collaboration. I think that in his mind, he's like, you know, she would be a great person to work with in the future. So this is very much giving like friendship, not heartbreak. So I think that actually this Eight of Cups in Reverse is a newer connection that he recently um, separated from and is kind of like getting over. So interesting. Liz says Vanessa was over in 2010. Okay, that makes sense. So I think at this point, he would be interested in even working with her in the future. Five-year relationship. That's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. But I think that he's definitely moved past the emotions of that, which makes sense. It was such a long time ago. Um, are we live? Yes, Julie, we are live. Okay, Liz says, if I had to guess, I think he finds it hard to find a real stable connection, especially because he doesn't want to live full time in LA. Okay, Liz, Liz has all the Zac Efron fun facts. That's helpful when interpreting these cards. Um, you know, if he doesn't want to live full time in LA, maybe that tumultuous period of eight of cups in reverse, overcoming that, you know, having to walk away from some sort of connection, maybe that will push him in the direction of moving to the place that is the right place for him. You know, sometimes those breakups will kind of, um, push you forward. You know what I mean? So sending him lots of love, that seems like it was kind of a lot, but he's doing well. You know, I think he has a lot going for him. And again, he's really thinking about like work connections, how to create new things, stuff like that.
So he seems like a pretty hard worker. I don't know his birth chart, but I feel like there could be Capricorn in there. Okay, so Sunday Night Live. Yes, Gigi, better than Saturday Night Live. <laughs> okay, so Penny wants an update on the royal family. Okay, Penny. So enough time has passed, you guys, to where I am comfortable doing a reading. I felt kind of bad before, but honestly, okay, here's, here's what I'm thinking. That reading that I did quite a while ago, um, hold on, I hear our dog out there, our other dog. Sorry, guys. I just asked Lawyer Mo to please get him because he's like playing like right out there. I want y'all to hear him. Okay. So basically when I did that reading on the Royal family before, I did feel a little bit bad because it just seemed like, you know, it was such a health thing. It was so sad. And we really haven't heard much from her since though. She was, I don't know. And I feel like the rumor mill continues to churn. It definitely quieted down a lot, which may have been part of the reason, you know, for them doing that video. Others have speculated that it was AI. I don't know. When I did that reading before, we got a lot of emotional things happening within the family. So I don't know. What do you guys think? What is your take been now that, oh, okay. The cards are flipping already though. I'm just going to take those because they flipped out and I'm very curious to see which cards just all flipped out in a clump. Um, okay. Seven of cups, four of pentacles, 10 of swords. Interesting. Okay. Now I have chills again. So the 10 of swords, this is about an ending of some sort. There was some sort of major ending that happened. Oof. I don't know. I'm still, I still feel like this is heartbreak guys. I know. And again, doesn't mean that two things can't be true at the same time. Maybe she's sick and this happened around the time of a heartbreak. I don't know. I kind of, I'm not going to comment on her health, but I'm going to comment on her emotional state and her relationship. Let's just do that. Definitely some sort of ending though. This 10 of swords is a major ending. This isn't just something that you have kind of disagreement. This is an ending of a phase of a relationship. Seven of cups. I believe I got this for her the last time when I did a reading. Um, and this is for Kate Middleton. Um, I believe I got this last time, the seven of cups, having to make a decision, not knowing which decision to make. I mean, this seven of cups is like, you can make so many different choices, just really unsure of which next step is the best one. This is overwhelm. This is feeling like I'm just afraid to make the wrong step. Interesting. And then we have the four of pentacles. And this is about a lack of abundance. This is feeling like you have something lacking. And because this is pentacles, this is financial. And I know that we established that like they definitely do have funds and money. And um, I wonder if this is about in the ending. If she leaves her marriage, if she leaves her relationship, there is some concern about her being tight with finances. I don't know how they do their divorces in the royal family. Like if they have some sort of split of the assets, probably I would have guessed that they don't get very much because all the money stays with the royal family. There's something going on here though with the finances. Let's do a read on Will. What's going on with Prince William? We have not really heard from him since the whole situation. I did see that Tisa tells has been like reporting another YouTuber. She's been reporting a lot about the Royal family. I've been keeping up with some of the stuff that she's been saying. And she just posted a video either today or yesterday saying that people are gossiping again, talking about Will with Rose Hanbury. And in the last reading I did, that's, that's what I got. So I, I don't know if that story comes out, I will not be surprised. Okay. What is Melissa saying? Oh, Melissa looked up Zach Efron's chart. He's a Libra sun, Virgo moon, Capricorn ascendant. Yes, guys, he feels so Capricorn, which makes sense because the ascendant would be like his person, his personality, um, his mindset, the way he presents himself. Wow, Melissa, thank you for that confirmation. Midheaven in Scorpio. Okay, wow. So he's meant to dive deep, maybe do some really serious projects as he gets older. 
dominated in Scorpio, Capricorn, Libra, and Pluto and Mercury, Venus. Wow. Houses 9, 10, 12, fixed water and earth. Melissa, mwah, amazing. 10 points for you. That was a beautiful breakdown. Um, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Wow. So he's very deep and mysterious. That really makes sense as to why he would be kind of withdrawn, very focused. Wow. Thank you. That's so interesting. Food for thought. He to sip on. Liz says, that's my man. That's right. Okay. Voice of Davis says, Zendaya said she doesn't want her future kids to go through stardom. Oh, and said she loves how Tom Holland handled being an overnight success. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that voice of Davis. That is so beautiful. <laughs> Liz is just, just dancing over here. My man, my man. Okay. So let's see what's going on with, with William, with Prince William. Um, He's been laying low. You know, I haven't seen really anything from him. I did see, again, Tisa tells, she does great reports. I like getting like info from her. She said today that um, he announced that he was going to be working from home as a royal, which she pointed out that people are questioning because you can't really do that. So, you know, with Pluto in Aquarius, we were talking about these things, you know, back in January, um, the monarchy not making it. And that's what this is. This is looking like it's kind of all splitting apart. So let's see what's going on with William. What's going on with William right now? Okay. Ten of cups in reverse. His marriage. Uh, wow. Okay. Ooh, I should have goosebumps on both my arms. So ten of cups in the upright. This is that happy family card, getting everything that you want. You've got like the, the two people just holding each other, looking up into the sky. Like this is just such a beautiful card of like having everything that you want with the family life. And like, there's a child there and the the card is just like, it's your perfect little Christmas card type of vibe. It's your hallmark moment. Um, in reverse, this is talking about that not being the case anymore. And I have to say that that has to be associated with this 10 of swords that we got for Kate. I know, I, I know that the rumors have been shut down by a lot of different people. I'm sorry. I'm still going to have to stand by the tarot T truth, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, that there is a major issue going on within their relationship. Because for this to be his main energy, the dissolution of his family life, what? Particularly like with his wife. Okay, we need another card. Stay tuned. Yep, William ain't saying a peep. See, isn't that strange? Huh. Stay tuned says, same here, Britt. Wouldn't be surprised... If that Rose story comes out right, oh my God, you were spot on about Zach having Capricorn energy, Britt. Wow. Aw, oh, thank you, Sage Man. You're so sweet. I can just feel it. I don't know. You know when you kind of get that feeling about somebody? Okay. Melissa says, not sure how accurate it is on Harry wanting to go over to assist and try to work on things with the family. Oh, interesting. Kate allegedly wants nothing to do with him when they reached out on her diagnosis. Okay, now that's very interesting. So I'm, here's the sad part about that. Thank you so much, Melissa, for that info. That's really helpful. Um, here's the sad part about that. Before Prince Harry was like in a serious relationship, when he was single, I remember a long time ago seeing like little montages about, you know, just how close he was and kind of the third wheel with his brother and Kate Middleton. And it was really cute. Like I remember seeing some, again, some montage of photos. <laughs> I have no idea where I saw this um, of like him just like smiling with Kate. They were like laughing. It was like, they had a really true like sibling relationship and they seemed very close and to get along really well. And that was kind of the story that was in the press. The fact that if that's true, that she would not want him around when she's sick after being so close, all I can say is that it's just her Capricorn son, I guess, of being extremely um, just like shut down. It's kind of like Capricorns are very loyal and serious. And if you betray a Capricorn similar to a Scorpio, it's harder for them to let let go, you know, move on. It usually takes them a really long time. Saturn is, is the ruler of Capricorn and Saturn is also known as like father time. Also about maturation, you know, holding people accountable. So for Kate as a, as a Capricorn son, I could actually see that story being true, Melissa. 
Wow. Okay. They were very close. Yes. Judy says, Julie says, yes. Yeah. Very sad. Penny. I agree. Very sad. Uh, Liz, by the way, Britt, you still need to watch the iron claw. Yes, I do. I do Liz. I'm going to write that down. Let's see. Iron claw. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's see if we get anything else for the Royal family. How about we, we pull a card on Harry's relationship with Kate because they did have that close friendship and the rumors are saying that he reached out and she refused. Oh, all right. That card flip. We're going to take it flipped like in the middle of the deck. Very weird. Stop it. The death card. Are you kidding? The death card is flipping in the middle of the deck. Oh, wow, guys. All right. Allegedly for entertainment purposes, the tarot tea. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Their relationship is over, done, through. That also was another chapter that was closed. I think that Kate's been going through a lot of closed chapters. Again, with that Capricorn sun energy, um, you know, Pluto moved. Actually, I don't know what her rising sign is. That'd be interesting to know. But basically, she's been in a period where she's been going through a big transition emotionally. And this death card talks about a major ending with she and Harry's relationship with their friendship. So I think that that interpretation stands. It doesn't get more clear than the death card. I mean, that's really showing that something's over. Not actual death, by the way. You know, let's just, just put that out there. Knock on wood. Um, this is about the death of their friendship. So I don't think that she's in communication with Harry. I don't think she wants to talk to him. I think their friendship, it's like um, ice cold. Like they don't even speak of each other. Very sad. Wow. A lot of, a lot of damage was, was done there. Okay. Yikes. Let's see. Oh my God, guys. Heavy, heavy tea. This is some highly caffeinated tea. All right. Um, right. Let's see anything else here about the Royal family. Let's just see what comes through the cards. I'm not going to even ask anything specific because it's a lot going on. I feel like there's a lot of conflicting energies here. Gigi says Leo rising. Okay. Wow. Another, I forgot when I said the ones, the Zodiac signs that it's just harder for them to forgive. Just they can do it. I'm not saying they're unforgiving people, but it just takes a little bit more for them. Leo is another one. Thank you, Gigi, for, for telling me the rising sign. That makes a lot of sense because Leos have a lot of pride and they're also very loyal. Um, if you look at, you know, lions, a group of lions, a family of lions is called the pride. They are all about that loyalty of defending one another. Um, there's a major hierarchy. It's also the zodiac sign associated with royalty. So for that to be her rising sign, which is a huge part of her identity and who she presents herself is what she believes in, you know, that's our rising sign energy. So for her to have that and then a Capricorn sun, ew, betrayal from a family member, I am not surprised that we have this death card. Wow. Again, chilling. Um, thank you, Gigi, for that. Oh, my God. Wow. It really seems like this is their karmic lessons playing out. Voice of Davis says, can you pull a card for the Golden Bachelor couple? They're divorcing after three months. <gasps> Voice of Davis, thank you for bringing that up. Oh, my God. Yes, that was on my list. Let's go. Okay, one more for the Royal Family, and then let's move on, because I do want to see about this Golden Bachelor thing. Because it's, it's just, okay. I'm going to wait till we get there to, to talk about it. I am dying, though, over that one. All right. So <laughs> anything else about the royal family before we move on? Any other energy that we can pick up on surrounding them? Guys, the queen of pentacles in reverse. Are you kidding? Literally the queen. Okay. Well, the tarot has been literal today. In reverse, this is basically talking about a time of prosperity that has come that is coming to an end. Allegedly, for entertainment purposes, this is not you do not want to get this. This would be an amazing card in the upright. Um, but specifically after asking about the royal family in reverse, yeah, this is basically just talking about an ending. And you know, Queen Elizabeth, I think that she when she was alive, she worked very hard to present a certain type of image and to, you know, keep the old traditions going and things like that. In reverse, this is also referring to that era truly being over. 
Yeah, I, I would say that this crumbling that we're seeing is just kind of part of this energy overall of the royals not being like the royal family is never going to be what it once was, basically, the British royal family. It's just, yeah, the, the traditions, everything we're seeing through the, the cracks, we're seeing that they're regular people, we're seeing that, you know, all of the pomp and circumstance and things that they have done for centuries to try to look a certain way, um, it, that's over, you know, that it's just, and unless they evolve, truly, I think that this period of prosperity that they've had for so long is truly over. So yikes. Well, nothing more to say on that. Dang. Hi, Babalu. Oh my gosh. Good to see you. How are you? Okay. Voice of Davis. Let's pull some bachelor cards. Melissa says I was not surprised. I was not surprised to see the golden bachelor couple divorcing. At first I thought you said I was surprised. I was going to say, I was kind of surprised. Um, that's hilarious, Melissa. I honestly, I, I didn't watch it. Okay. So I can't really comment too much. Did anybody watch The Golden Bachelor? I was hoping that just from like, I don't know, the previews and stuff that I heard people saying, people were talking about how it seemed like it was so different. Sorry, I need a quick sip there. How it seemed so different. Other people were saying like, oh my gosh, it seemed like they truly found their second chance at love. So for me, I just kind of filed it away in the back of my head of like, you know what? Sometimes when people are really mature, you know, at a more mature age, it's easier to find what you're looking for. Maybe you just know more quickly. I could see that being the case. You've just, you know, seen more life. So you've learned more life lessons. It's just easier for you to know like what is right for you. So I was just in fantasy land thinking, oh my gosh, how cute. The Golden Bachelor. Wow. Like they're just going to live happily ever after. When I saw that they like got divorced after three months, I was like, oh my God, like they couldn't even keep it going for a show. Like, you know that there's a real reason. So I definitely want to see what happened between the two of them. Oh my gosh. Oh, glad you're doing well, Babalu. Okay, one card just flew right out. We have the moon card. Mm, deception, illusions. Oh my God. Okay, when we're talking about a reality show couple like this, again, goosebumps, you know, people are going to show their best side on TV, right? They're going to want to look like, I don't know, like silly things like or like little things. It's like, you know, they just want to be be so perfect. They want to present a certain image, not only to the person, I think in regular dating, people try to put their best foot forward, but on TV, not only are people thinking about how people are going to perceive, you know, their dating skills, but their relationship, they want the audience to like them. It's just like so much going on. So there was a lot of deception, a lot of illusion created that, the divorce ultimately, I think, was about people seeing each other's true colors. This is just a lot that was hidden. The moon, oh, wow, this could be like things like exes coming out of the closet later. This could be oh, someone having a really bad credit score or like a lot of debt. Like this is just like weird, like things in the closet coming out. Let's see. What were their names? Hold on. So I feel weird, like not saying their names when I do their reading. Um, let's see. Golden Bachelor. I, I did see that they were just kind of like, oh, you know, didn't work out or something like, okay. Golden Bachelor stars Gary Turner, G-E-R-R-Y, Gary, or is that a weird way to say, to spell Jerry? I, I guess Gary. And Teresa Neist. Okay. So let's see what, was it, is it Gary or Jerry? Oh, well, let's see what Gary, Gary Jerry's feelings are right now. His ex came out. Stop it, Melissa. His ex came out and talked about how horrible he was to her verbally abuse, etc. Allegedly. Guys, skeletons coming out of the closet. The perfect veneer. Like, I mean, wow, the perfect veneer cracking. Thank you for that confirmation, Melissa. Oh my gosh, that has me just, wow. 
shook. I'm just like, wow. Okay. So that could have definitely been a big part of it, which that's terrible, by the way. I mean, I'm not trying to take pleasure in that. That's so sad. Um, I'm just giddy that the tea is just telling us so dead on. Okay. So how does, let's, let's check on Teresa then. How is Teresa feeling? What are her thoughts and feelings right now about this divorce, about Gary, Gary, Jerry, <laughs> Three of Pentacles. Interesting. She is thinking about finances. She's thinking about work. She's thinking about collaboration. Was she wanting to, I don't know what her job was pre, you know, prior to this, but this has to do with, let's see if this People Magazine article says anything. Oh my. Well, this article doesn't say anything about, about her, but it does say that Golden Bachelor contestant Maria Trice reacts to Jerry Turner's or Gary Turner's divorce news. I dodged a bullet, she says. Oh my, okay. So he's getting some bad press. I think that Teresa was hoping that maybe something more would come of this whole thing work-wise. And I don't know what that could be. Because Three of Pentacles, this is like working with other women, uh, cultivating a female audience, it could be that I don't know what she does, what her job is, but you know, a lot of people when they're on the bachelor and she's the first golden bachelorette, um, especially to get married, a lot of people, they go on to have careers that, you know, definitely, um, benefited from that first initial step into the spotlight, helping them build a social media following, possibly product lines. Um, some of them go on to, you know, have podcasts, write books, all kinds of things. So she definitely had some sort of idea or something that she wanted to come out of this experience that had to do with three energy, being creative, and pentacles, making money from a creative endeavor that has to do with a female audience. So she was very concerned about this. She's, I think, disappointed about this right now. Let's do a past, present, future on the couple's relationship to see what exactly went wrong. What you said, Melissa, sounds like that would be enough to break up a, you know, relationship that had a lot of secrets to begin with. But let's just see what the past, present, future read is on the golden, we're just going to call it the golden bachelor split. Julie sure makes sense. Hmm. It does, doesn't it, Julie? Hmm. Okay. Past, present, future. So in the past, when the connection was positive, what drew these two together? What drew Gary and Teresa together? Oh, wow. That card flipped like no other. I love it when they flip like that because it's like no denying that. Wow. Okay. We got two cards here stuck together. Um, interesting. We have the Ace of Pentacles. I did say that she was interested in making money from a creative project. So the Ace of Pentacles, this is money, success, fame spotlight, just like abundance. All right. Can't blame a person for liking those things. Um, so definitely there were stars in their eyes. They were excited about the opportunity. Also seven of wands. This is about competition though. And this can be about feeling a sense of motivation because you want to win something versus love. You know, we don't have any, there's no cups that came out. We, I mean, not even like a night, like, so the fact that we have money and competition as the motivator or as what initially drew these two together, it makes so much sense, but it also makes sense as to why that wouldn't last because this was not rooted in love. It was rooted in allegedly for entertainment purposes in a desire to win. So this can talk about Teresa, maybe, you know, Hey, everybody has different things that they like. Maybe Teresa has a lot of Aries in her chart or maybe Venus and Aries, who knows? And, you know, she kind of liked the idea of winning. Hey, whatever you do, you, you know, and then the success, but this is both of them. I think both of them were caught up in the experience and in the adrenaline rush of everything that this whole show brings to people. All right. I think it's kind of a classic tale, right? This isn't the first time that this has happened with a reality show couple. 
All right. So that was the past. Let's see about the present. What's going on with him in the present? Okay. Julie says I have my own feelings. So we'll see. Ooh, do tell Julie. Interesting. Julie, did you watch The Golden Bachelor? Okay. So that was past. Let's see what happened next. Let's just see what happened after that initial spark. The sun card. Okay, this is actually really sad. Okay, then there was a period of happiness. <sighs> okay, and the sun is all about the light shining upon you. The sun is feeling uplifted, excited, and truly joyful. So I do think that they have a lot of basic compatibility and that they did go through a sun period of feeling like um, just happiness, like their wish was fulfilled. So I think at the time of their you know, walking down the aisle, it was genuine on both sides. So, I mean, that's at least positive, but it's sad that that, that this didn't work out, you know, because the sun card is such a beautiful blessing. So it has to be some sort of karmic relationship or lesson that they're learning. Um, Melissa says they're both Leos. <gasps> well, Melissa, you're bringing so much good astrology confirmation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. And Leos are obviously ruled by the sun in astrology. So this would also talk about Leo energy. Um, that's just confirmation that they truly did get along like two Leos do. Two Leos, especially in a relationship, can get along great because they truly understand each other and they can form a pride, right? Just like lions do in the wild. Um, it can be a beautiful connection as long as both provide enough room for the other to shine because both have to be warmed by the sun. And if they can share that energy, they truly can feel just that their generosity and their loyalty finally comes back to them. So I do think that they felt that for a time. Wow. Thank you, Melissa. That's so interesting. Okay. And then what happened after that, just to elaborate on, you know, this breakup situation, we know that it was through the moon. Ultimately, we know that the lies or deception or maybe lies of omission, things that were left out. Um, we know that that's what led to it, but let's just get a little bit of a clarifier there on what exactly happened and why in three months, you know, why was it something that was so immediate that they just, okay, guys just freaking flew out. I, the tarot tea is on fire tonight. Um, okay. So allegedly for entertainment purposes only, we had the nine of swords fly from the deck and shoot over my leg. That is just so weird. Um, this is about stress. So this is talking about basically the reason that they ended the marriage after three months. They couldn't even wait to save face or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people do that, especially on TV. Um, it's because of this nine of swords energy. It was so stressful. The actual relationship became so extremely stressful. And to go from this sun card of like compatibility, happiness, I would say that there was probably intense like grief and sadness on both sides. Maybe that led to fighting. Um, this emotional shift that happened right after the sun card, it's like even more intense because of how happy they were. I feel like that contributed to how upsetting this was for both people. Even if they're not sharing that, even if they're acting like this was just like a mutual thing or it just didn't work out. I would say there was real, there, there was a lot of like drama around it because this nine of swords is a lot of emotional drama and both people feeling very stressed out. That's why they had to end it. They just kind of couldn't take it anymore. It was like, we just, this just isn't working and we can't take it anymore. Like it's not fixable. A lot of arguing. It's very sad actually. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's see what you, what are you guys saying? A little break from the cards. <laughs> Okay. Julie says, I just feel like, yes, genuine at first, but they have separate lives. So amazing. They would be, oh, so amazing. It would be two Leos. Yeah. Okay. Melissa says he has a Libra moon and she has a Gemini moon. Okay. Wow. Thank you for that, Melissa. So with a Libra moon, this person is, go that makes so much sense that he would go on the Golden Bachelor, by the way. With a Libra moon, you truly are emotionally looking for partnership. So I think that that part, very genuine. Like, I think that he really did want a partner to share his life with, all of that. A Gemini moon, 
uh, loves variety, loves to have fun, you know, sometimes can't really be tied down, but that's exciting for a Libra moon because it's like kind of keeps them on their toes, keeps the element of like the little bit of a game, keeps it fun and fresh. And two air signs are very compatible. So it makes sense that they were very compatible. That's very sad. Yeah. So I would say it was just like kind of a sad, tragic situation. It's like they thought, I don't know, they kind of were like, okay, this is so exciting and fun. They wanted to win and maybe they lost focus on needing to make sure that there's a deep emotional connection that, and that all of these moon energies are really, um, you know, sussed out before they make a big commitment. It's kind of like just rushing in and not making sure that you know everything about each other first. Um, and that makes sense that that would turn from happiness to stress and sadness when, you know, skeletons came out of the closet and things started to be revealed. <sighs> that is sad. Yeah. So I, that's what happened with them. Allegedly for entertainment purposes only. That's what I'm going to say is the tarot tea truth on those two. Okay. So moving right along, I did get a DM about Lana Del Rey. Someone asked about her Coachella set and just how amazing she looked at Coachella. Did you guys see any of the photos or videos of Lana Del Rey from Coachella? She looks absolutely amazing. I definitely want to look into her birth chart, into her numerology. Maybe I'll do that on the next upcoming podcast or maybe on like a quick sip tea where I can go kind of in depth about her and her chart, because there are definitely periods of time where all of us kind of get like a little extra boost from the universe. And it kind of depends on like your transits. It could even be, like I said, in numerology, like what personal month you're in, but whatever's going on for Lana Del Rey, she is glowing. She looked beautiful. Her set was amazing. She sang with Billie Eilish for one of her songs. Um, I just thought it was Wonderful. It's like the Lana Del Rey that we all kind of know and love. So that was great to see. And I just want to pull a couple cards for that person who requested to know more about what's going on with her life. So we're going to do a little general reading about Lana Del Rey. I also loved her outfit. Oh my gosh. That blue looked beautiful on her. Okay. Julie says, yes, I did. Wow. She was amazing. She was so amazing. Okay. Lana Del Rey. Just some cards for her current energy. What's going on with her? Little update. Ooh, I like it. Okay, three of wands. She is looking to the future. And three energy is all about creativity. And wands is about passion. I really like this. She's actually super excited about the future. I just got goosebumps on my face. So confirmation. She's excited about the future. She's making plans. She feels that second wind. You know how sometimes like life can just like it can get stressful. Like you might have different things that are going on at a certain period of time and you feel kind of dragged down and then something good happens or you're reminded of your inner strength and you feel like you kind of got your mojo back. That's what this is. This is energy of passion and being excited again for what the future may hold. So this is manifesting. She's really like, yeah, she's feeling her mojo. I love that. Three of wands. And in, oh my gosh. And in the little eyeglasses or the binoculars, there's like a beautiful sunset and like, yeah. So she just, she has great things coming towards her as well. Wow. Okay. I like it. Let's see what else. <laughs> Julie says, thank you, person. Great question, LOL. <laughs> um, okay. Lana Del Rey, anything else for her? Guys, another future card. What the heck? Okay, now this is the two of wands. So she got the two of wands and the three of wands. So she's been planning her future. She's been planning this... I don't want to say glow up because she's always been glowing. She's a beautiful 
talented person, but she's been like planning something for a while. Um, in the two of wands, she's holding the whole world in her hands. In the three of wands, she has the binoculars and it's like things have gone to the next level. Things are starting to happen. Three is about energy and action. Two is more about like resting and finding like the right partners, pulling things together, making things happen behind the scenes. So wow, to get the two and three of wands, this is just confirmation that she has some really big things coming in the future that she has not announced yet or that we don't know about yet. And this is kind of, we're starting to see her kick off a new era. I think she's going to be more public. I think she's going to be doing more things, um, looking like this, maybe releasing more music. Uh, wow. I really, really love that. She's been planning, like maybe she's been working with a new marketing team, but there's been a lot going on behind the scenes that she's excited to start unveiling. I really, really like that. She's in like such a good, I get that she's in such a good place. It kind of feels like maybe she healed from something and then she spent time focusing on herself. I'm getting goosebumps. So I think allegedly for entertainment purposes, this is what I feel it is. And then she had a period where she focused on herself and now we're starting to see like her plans unfold. She's sharing everything she's been working on. Oh my God. I love it. Okay. Lighter hair color. looks so good on her. Oh, does she have a lighter hair color too? I just thought it was her makeup, but yeah, her hair did look kind of like Auburn, didn't it? It had like a little bit of red in it. That was like such a great era for her. I agree. She looks amazing with like that little bit of red to her hair. She's very fiery. Sorry, Britain, everyone, I have to run, but we'll rewatch. Everyone have a great evening. Oh my gosh, don't be sorry, Penny. You have a great night. It was so good to see you. And I hope you have an amazing start to your week. Thanks for being here, Penny, and loved your request about the Royals. That was good. Okay. So, oop, now the whole deck's flying. All right. I like that. I actually want to leave it there because I really think that this is so straightforward about where she's at. We're going to see more of this. We're going to see a lot more of her. We're going to see a lot of her in her element, feeling good, bringing back that glamorous aesthetic. Um, very exciting. Okay. I love that. We also saw Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey actually like dancing in the crowd at Coachella. I am shocked. There has to have been like some sort of, um, security detail. I'm sure right somewhere over there. But if you guys have ever been to a festival, you know, that like when people are packed in like that, it's like people are touching each other. Like I was shocked. Like, I was like, I can't believe they're actually out there doing that. Now, of course, Travis Kelsey is huge and he had his arms around her kind of protecting her from anybody being able to like bump in. And then Sabrina Carpenter was right in front of her with Gary Keoghan. So maybe, maybe they knew the people around them in the immediate surroundings, but all the posts I saw were like, in the crowd, Taylor and Travis, just like doing Coachella like everybody else kind of thing. So I want to read, pull some cards and read their current energy because they just seem to be doing so well. They seem to be getting along amazingly. And in all of those videos and photos, they just seem so happy and in love. So I want to pull a couple of cards for them. What are you guys saying? Julie says, hell yeah, feeling herself and moving and shaking. Get it, girl. Yes, about Lana Del Rey, 1,000%. Liz says, Taylor's been in the crowd at Coachella before. Really? When she was dating Calvin Harris. Okay. Okay, interesting. That was crazy, Julie says. Yeah, very interesting. Good to know, Liz. I did not know that. Okay. So it just sort of depends on, you know, who Taylor's with. I guess with Calvin, it was like a music thing that they kind of had obviously had together and maybe, you know, he felt comfortable as a DJ being in crowds as well. And she just was kind of like going with it. And then with Travis, she feels confident because he is, um, you know, like in the NFL. So it's not like people are going to be able to, you know, get to her. Like he's very strong. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So let's just pull a couple cards for them. First, let's pull a card for Taylor. What is Taylor's current energy? How is she feeling? I mean, that woman gets more done in a day. Like, I don't even know how she does it. Flying around the world, going to support her friends, working her butt off. Like, wow. I want whatever supplements she's having. I'll say that. Okay. All right. 
so the ooh, okay, the Queen of Swords. You know, and Taylor, who is a suspected Scorpio rising, I do think that she's a Scorpio rising. There are there's a certain camp that believes her to be a, I believe it was a Capricorn rising, but I do see her as a Scorpio rising personally. And this Queen of Swords energy definitely goes hand in hand with how she is, the way that she operates. Now, as much as Taylor is in her happy era, you know, just having so much fun, she was wearing a backwards cap, like I think just really enjoying life, not overthinking. She just seems like she's living her life for herself, which is so great to see. At the end of the day, though, in the back of her mind, she is still a Scorpio rising and she's always going to be in this queen of swords energy. Now, the queen energy is about mastery. So I do love that. And it talks about her being the master. Oh, my God. A mastermind. One of her songs. OK, yes. So she's told everyone who she really is throughout her songs. Like if you listen to her music, you are really getting to know her the way that she views her life, what she's been through. And, you know, when she talks about being a mastermind, I would say that was accurate. She was just being real. And she's still in this little bit of a mastermind energy. And that's not a bad thing. I think that everybody operates the way that they, you know, whatever, need to operate, however they need to operate. But she is, it's interesting that this is the card that identifies her right now. Even though she's in a loved up era, she is keeping her wits about her. This is talking about strategy. Um, I would say that she's probably one of those people that is able to think circles around everybody around her. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's just, I don't know, maybe she has like a super high IQ. She really has to to be able to like write all those songs. But she's, this is talking about her being a leader, her really being, mm, nobody's ever going to pull anything over on her again. I'll just say that. She's very aware of the way that she's being perceived, allegedly for entertainment purposes. She's aware of her image. I think that part of her doing the Coachella stuff, again, there's nothing bad about this. I genuinely think she's having fun. I genuinely think she loves to support her friends. But there's an element of being in the crowd that I think is this mastermind energy of feeling like she wants her fans to know that she's like one of them. She also has Venus in Aquarius. So, you know, Pluto is conjunct her Venus right now. So she's been going through a transformation in love and in her creativity. And I think that that is a way that she is empowering herself. I think it's really good for her image. I think it's really smart with Pluto and Aquarius to be less of the celebrity that's untouchable because I think the people that are going to gain popularity are the people with Aquarius energy um, of one of the people. So I think she's doing it right. Yet again, she is out masterminding everyone. <laughs> I love it. So she's, but anyway, she's got her head on straight. She knows exactly what she's doing. I'll leave it at that. And on every level, in her love life, in her career, and with her image. And none of us should be surprised by that, right? All right, let's do another one. Okay. Oh, Vampirella. Yes, of course I remember you. How are you? Good to see you. Okay. Gigi says, I think she's a Capricorn rising. Okay. So you're of the Capricorn rising camp. Fair enough, Gigi. We can agree to disagree. Okay. Liz says, yeah, she posted an IG post on her story supporting Calvin. People forget that. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, Liz. Very cool. All right. So... Let's pull a card for Travis. How is his energy? You know, what kind of vibe is he in right now? He's definitely having fun. This is his off season. You know, he's definitely in full on boyfriend mode, which is so cute and wonderful to be supportive. Let's just pull a card that represents his energy. Travis Kelsey's energy. Oh. <laughs> okay. I actually like this. We have the chariot in reverse. Oh my God. I love this. Okay. So the chariot in the upright, that would scare me because that is a person that has like more than one, you know, lover, like more than one person. This is, if you guys have watched golden girls, you know, that like Blanche Devereaux is the character that always has, she's like the Samantha Jones, like the original Samantha Jones, like always has like a million boyfriends and is always pursuing all these people and really loves the spotlight and the attention. Okay. 
Well, this card represents that energy. It's Mars energy. In the reverse, this is talking about overcoming that energy. So, you know, I would say at one period in his life, he was kind of like a man about town, which I think a lot of men go through that phase. And especially men who are in the NFL, I think the problem is when some of them don't, you know, outgrow it. They never, they kind of stay in that Peter Pan syndrome. This is talking about in the reverse, like a change of kind of like him changing his ways. So I would say that he's like fully in. Okay. It's so interesting that this like point was made though, because this is almost like him being like, it's like talking about his loyalty. This is saying like he is completely loyal. Um, the Mars energy is almost like shut off to where he's really in more of like a feminine energy of like nurturing and caring, which I think is the energy that, you know, everyone gets into when they fall in love, men and women. And I think especially when a man gets into that energy, you really know he's in love. So that's really interesting. He's just very committed, very focused on her. He is not in that vibe anymore that he was in at one time. I think he's reformed a lot of his ways. That's interesting. Okay. That makes sense though. Wow. So we have the queen of swords and the chariot in reverse. She definitely wears the pants. She definitely wears the pants in the relationship. Let's see if anything else comes through for them. That's kind of hilarious. Let's see if anything else comes through for Taylor and Travis. I would say it's an equal relationship, but she definitely wears the pants. At the end of the day, I think that, you know, he defers to her. Anything else about Taylor and Travis? Oh my gosh. Yes, Babalu, I love your request. Liz says, Taylor always wears the pants no matter what. Mm, so true. So true, Liz. Babalu, Britt, would you pull a card for Jason Kelsey and see how he's doing in retirement? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. I love that question so much, Babalu. Okay. Anything else about their relationship? Queen of Wands. Oh, my God. I love this. We definitely got this card for them a long time ago. This is about, and we were talking about Taylor, because this is about, like, truly feeling like you are following your soul's purpose, your soul's path. Um, the Queen of Wands is associated with the solar plexus chakra represented by the sunflower here on the card, which is, like, I told you guys a long time ago, one of the reasons that I adopted Sunny from the shelter because his name was Sunflower and, like, I love this card and it sounds crazy, but like, I love this card and like what it symbolizes. And to me, this card is always kind of like a little God wink to move in that direction or, um, you know, follow your own arrow, which Taylor also talks about. So this is confirming that they are following their own arrow, that they are in a phase of passionate creativity and joy. Um, it's a very healthy connection. I love that. That's so cute. Okay. Beautiful. Honestly, I always get such good readings on them. It's just like so complimentary. It's like when you finally find someone that gets you. It's beautiful. I love it. Okay. Amazing. Now let's see. Okay. Babalu. Yes. Let's let's pull the card on Jason Kelsey and see how Jason, Travis's brother, is doing in retirement. Did you guys watch his retirement speech? Like Michael and I were crying. We were crying in the car. We were tearing up. It was so like, I love how Jason Kelsey shows his emotions. I love that. I think that like the Kelsey family, the men, at least the two brothers show positive, um, like emotional masculinity, like in a way that's like men can be emotional. You know, they do have, it's just, it's really positive. So I love that. I love that they show their feelings and I definitely am curious too about how he's doing because also in Jason Kelsey's documentary, he talked about that he seems so genuine. He seems so genuine. I agree a thousand percent. What a good point. He just seems so genuine. I think, I think that's why people love him. Don't you? It's like, you can just see that he is a hundred percent himself. He's not, there's no pretense. He's been through ups and downs of life. He doesn't hide anything. Like I, I love it. He tries his best to be a good dad and yeah. So, okay. All right. A couple flipped over. We're going to take them. So or three flipped over. We're going to take all three. Okay. So for Jason Kelsey, how he's doing in his retirement, we have the strength card, 
that makes sense. He definitely comes across as a strong person, a person of character, a person with strong values. Um, if you saw his documentary, I believe available on Netflix, so good. Like it motivated me to like want to be a better person and like be more disciplined in my own life. Um, very much about strength energy, a strength that comes from within. So he is staying strong. Love that. Uh, King of Cups, which is emotional maturity. It's so funny because we were just talking about how emotionally uh, genuine and open he is. I really see him as a positive example for like young men and boys, um, especially like in this time of a lot of toxic masculinity out there. I love seeing a man who's like plays in the NFL, is a father, a husband, um, you know, has a good like positive morals to put out there. So yeah, King of Cups, definitely emotionally mature. This is talking about his ability to express his emotions, process his emotions. He's definitely feeling like he's doing better than he thought he was going to be doing. Um, so he's staying strong. He's staying emotionally grounded. He's... I think really making sure that he stays on top of that so that he doesn't, you know, get down or whatever, because that can be really tough. And then we have this five of cups card. Yeah. So, okay. He has to, he has to stay in this energy because this is also going on, which again, makes sense. He's been playing football since he was a child. It's the only job that he's ever really had, you know, and then it's, it's just gone. You have to start a new chapter. So this five of cups card is about, crying over what you no longer have, but there is something that you do have in the background. And he knows that he has that. He has the podcast. He has other opportunities. I think he could get hired in a second by any of the big broadcast companies to like commentate on the NFL network or like Tony Ro Romo. I think he's on like CBS. Like so many athletes have gone on to do things in media. And I think that with him being so uh, beloved and having experience hosting a podcast. I think that his career opportunities are endless. And I think he knows that, but he's still sad. He's still sad about what he has. He feels he has lost because the cups, this is emotion. So I would say, yes, he still feels sad, but he's staying strong and he's emotionally mature enough to move through this period of his life. So he's doing so with dignity. He's not like, you know, unable to get out of bed or like going through some of the stuff that I think is a lot of people go through and think it's normal. You know, he was talking to some of his friends and they were saying like in the documentary, they were saying like, well, retirement, like you're never going to, you know, it's never going to be the same. And like some of them had struggles and anyway, so I'm glad to see that he is staying strong. Thank you for that request. Babalu. That's really good. Heat lifer. Do you think that he'll have another child? Well, heat lifer, he is in a six personal year which is a year that's associated with family, the home. So I would say based on the, okay, I'm just like throwing cards now. <laughs> it was weird. I'm going to take them because they flew all the way up. Um, <laughs> we're, we're getting wild tonight. I would say just based alone on the fact that he's in a six personal year, that if they are going to have another baby, definitely uh, Kylie would become pregnant in 2024 because six year is like when it happens. If you look at a six, it even kind of has like, it looks like a little pregnant belly. If you kind of just twist your, you know, twist your head a little. So six is like fertility and like home family. Very interesting. So we have nine of pentacles, which is like self-care. All right. Justice balance. So yeah, Jason Kelsey's learning balance. He's taking care of himself right now. The, mu the mu magician and the king of wands though, definitely a possibility. We're just going to say it's a little spicy. Okay. They're having fun. Finally being able to be together more. And the magician is creating something new. And if we're talking about a new baby, I would say the magician is saying there's a good chance. So I, yeah, I actually, allegedly for entertainment purposes, I would say, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Based on this reading. Great question, Heat Lifer. Okay. Babalu's energy is so strong. It took over the deck. It really did. <laughs> They're like continuing to come out, just flying over the place. <laughs> I know Babalu. Seriously. He's like, yeah, he's just, he's got a huge personality. Uh, okay. Vampire Relic. Can you do a reading on Natalie Portman after she divorced her cheating ex-husband? Is she dating anyone now? What's her future like? Oh, okay. Good question. Absolutely. Vampirella. We have not checked on Natalie Portman in a while. Um, it wasn't too long ago that they finally got divorced. Was it? I think Natalie filed. Oh, 
Aw, Heat Life versus Aw. Thanks, I had a feeling they would. Aw. I know, right? How cute is that? I think that he's going to experience a lot more happiness. It's just having to kind of get in the swing of his new life. You know, it's just an adjustment. Adjustments are always hard. Okay, so let's see. Natalie Portman after her divorce from her cheating ex-husband. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Is she dating anyone now? What's her future like? All right, let's see. Natalie Portman. What's going on with her love life now? Allegedly for entertainment purposes. Death card. Oh my God. Okay. The death card's coming out a lot tonight. Um, This is still talking about the ending of the divorce. So I would say she's still in a period where... Um, She's kind of in that divorce death death period that she feels like it's it's a loss of a big part of her life. Um, even though I think that she felt this coming for a long time, it doesn't make it any easier. This is more being in a place of the ending rather than feeling ready for the new beginning. The fact that this is the card that came out. Yeah, she's not, I don't think she's really thinking about moving. I just got goosebumps too. So confirmation. I don't think she's thinking about moving on at this moment. It's sort of like still processing, still figuring out how to deal with it, still rearranging her life, kind of getting yourself back after all of that for sharing your life with somebody else, being disappointed, dividing everything up. Maybe they're still in the process of dividing things up, but this is a focus on the ending. Okay, so let's see anything else. Um, <laughs> is she, oh, okay. All right. Wow. All right. Um, guys, a little speechless. So we had for the golden bachelor, remember how we pulled out the sun card and then the nine of swords card. Well, these just flew out and the way they flew, they landed in the reverse. This is a little, this is getting a little wild tonight. Okay. Like I said, I don't know. The cards are flying. Um, even though there's a death, as far as Natalie Portman feels, it's like a death in her life about the divorce. She is overcoming this Nine of Swords energy. This is in the reverse. So this is like talking about a long period of time that led up to this ending in her love life that was marked by feelings of stress and sadness and anxiety. And of course, you can imagine that that would be the general feeling after you find out that your husband's been cheating on you and like, you know, all this stuff. And then having to think about, you know, losing that person in your life, feeling betrayed, uh, wondering all the lies, just trying to kind of, I think, piece it all together. That's what this Nine of Swords energy was. So for a long time, she was in that headspace, which is natural. Um but in the reverse, this is overcoming it. So she's out of that place. She's not still questioning what happened. She's not still going over it in her mind. So when we got this death card, this is not talking about her necessarily being sad about the death card. Um, she's already experienced the sadness. That's what this reverse means. But she's just like still not ready to like start over yet. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel, she's just not like that motivated yet. I think it would take the right person. So we'll pull a card to see if anybody's coming into her life. Cause that would be good. Um, cause she definitely deserves happiness. And after all this, it's time, you know, it's time for her to like meet someone who feels uplifting and helps her get like her spark back. But the sun in reverse as well coming out, that's also about, man, for these two to come out together, guys, what a dark period of time. Honestly, let's just send her love because, wow, the sun card is like all of the things that you loved and that you were happiest about in your life not working out, which is what caused the sadness, stress, and anxiety. So the death card indicates that, you know, with this divorce ended that chapter of her life and also put an end to the feelings of sadness. So I think obviously the next chapter is going to be so much better because this is like, okay, the end of that phase of sadness. Like she learned the lessons, whatever she needed to go through spiritual lessons, like that's done. She's not going to attract like another person like that. Um, that period of time is done, but it was really painful. That's really a lot to deal with. Okay. Now let's see who Natalie Portman's next partner will be, like who's coming towards her. Let's just put that out there. 
Okay, Van Perel said she shouldn't have ever ever married that man. She was foolish. Oh, because she had an affair with him when they first started. Oh, I didn't know that. It's kind of the case of, you know, how they say you lose them, how you get them. Hopefully she'll never do something like that again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Melissa says it sounded like she really tried to make it work with her ex after he cheated. I think so. I think that's where a lot of those swords came from. Gigi says during award season, she looks kind of dead behind the eyes or no joy in her eyes. Yeah. I definitely think she was going through some stuff. Melissa says Natalie has Gemini sun, Virgo moon, ascendant in Scorpio and mid heaven and Leo. Ooh, okay. So thank you for that, Melissa. First of all, that's so helpful and brings so much clarity to have her birth chart information for someone with those placements in particular. You know, we talked about, Scorpio, Leo, Capricorn, not handling betrayal well, taking them a little bit longer to forgive. She's got a lot of that already. I mean, wow. Three out of four. So for her, it's not easy. You know, with the Scorpio rising, those people are very loyal and they will tell you exactly like what the truth is. They prefer the truth over a lie, even if the truth is hurtful or unpleasant. So for her to be lied to as a Scorpio rising, that's really difficult to get over. Um, Midheaven and Leo, the pride thing, I think that it also probably hurt her pride, made her feel some type of way about that as far as like her image and, and wanting to be seen a certain way. She's kind of like a Leo thing. And then with the Virgo moon, Virgo moons are very, very giving. Um, Virgo moons actually have to be careful that they don't get taken advantage of because Virgo being the healer, if that's someone's moon sign, um, they're very, very nurturing and they tend to put their partner before themselves. So to do that and to continue to act that way and then to be betrayed, if I feel like it just, it feels even worse because it's like after giving someone really everything, maybe even over giving at times the betrayal. I think it's like, it hurts twice as bad. So yeah, that's really rough. Um, Vampirella says her ex is a Gemini sun, Aries moon. Interesting. And Natalie's a Gemini sun. Aries moon and Virgo moon. That's tough. That's tough. Um, in one book I read a long time ago, it said that Aries and Virgo, it's like a moth to a flame. Um, Aries is the flame and Virgo is the moth that gets burned. I think that holds true in this case. Okay. Yikes. Dang. It sounds like messy boots. It sure does, Sage Moon. <laughs> it sure does. Oh my. All right. Um, let's see. We had another request up here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, Babalu, where would you build a card for Shakira? Has she healed her situation? It was so messy. That is such a good question, Babalu. Um, let me pull one more card to see if anybody's coming towards Natalie Portman. And then, yeah, let's move on to Shakira, Shakira. Let's see. Is anybody coming towards Natalie Portman? Anything coming up that's good in the love life department? And you know, Vampirella, if she did do the cheating to get into that relationship, it looks like karma. Karma probably served it back to her tenfold in the pain department because she definitely was feeling it, you know? And it's kind of like what we do comes back to us. So karmic justice, I guess. Okay. Um, anybody coming towards her? That's why we never have to deliver karma. The universe will do it for us. You can just like block out the people that hurt you and just keep it moving. The universe will take care of it. You don't want to get yourself, you know, caught up in anything like that. Okay, let's see. Oh, Ten of Wands. Okay, a burden, but a burden worth having. I I would say that I don't see anybody coming into her love life in the immediate future. This is talking about if she did get into a relationship at this moment in time because of like her mindset, it would feel more like a burden. Um, it it could be a burden worth having with the right person, but there would be some sort of complication to the connection. So I would say, you know, if she were my friend, I would say, hey, just heal, do your thing, focus on you. And, you know, the right person will come around when they're meant to. Don't force anything. Because I don't think that you want to force a 10 of wands type of connection with someone. So yeah, she's just not in the face. 
you know, maybe, maybe in a couple months, maybe, maybe during, let's see, what's her moon sign? Maybe during Virgo season, she'll meet somebody. Okay. But not, I would say not now. All right. Woo. Okay. Shakira. How is Shakira doing? Isn't Shakira dating somebody new? That I thought I saw she was like dating somebody. Let's see. How is Shakira doing? Eight of swords. <laughs> Shagira. Okay. Um, this is allegedly for entertainment purposes only. This is like stress and anxiety, but it's like the things that we kind of like make up as opposed to the nine of swords. It's like real things going wrong that are stressing you out. This is more like having fears that are like unfounded. So this could be fears that, you know, a past situation will repeat. Um, this could be insecurities that are just basically from like, again, like a past experience. That's where a lot of this eight of swords comes from. All you have to do is take off the blindfold. Um, so hopefully she, when you're in this state of mind, you don't want to make any like rash decisions. So hopefully she just like lets things play out in her love life. Maybe she's really into the person that she's dating and she's worried that she could go through the same type of heartbreak. Let's pull a clarifier. What is this eight of swords about for Shakira? Vampirella says she is dating someone new. Okay, good to know. Luci Lucien Laviscount. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Vampirella. The guy from, uh, what is it? Emily in Paris, right? Interesting. So he's like an actor that's, has he been in anything else other than, other than Emily in Paris? I think I've only seen him in that. Or Bridgerton? Maybe both. Um Okay. Okay. This eight of swords is kind of starting to make a little more sense. He's someone in the industry. All right. Let's see. What else about this eight of swords? And thank you for, um, for that info, Vampirella. I forgot she was dating that guy. Knight of swords. Okay. So I would say that this card represents that Lucian Laviscount guy. <laughs> what a name. Um, sounds like royal or like something from like the Victorian era. Um, he's represented by a knight of swords energy. So this is more swords. So this is confirming to me at least that this is what this is about. Um, she just sees him as somebody who can be a little bit pointed in the way that he speaks. He's very, it's almost like someone who says things like a little too bluntly. So I think sometimes maybe he speaks in a way that's blunt. Um, maybe he has kind of a, like a pushy energy. Huh? I don't know. I really don't know anything about him. I barely know the couple of things he's been in, but he's someone who is, you know, somewhat of a thinker, someone who might be rash to run in to like rush into different decisions. Someone's highly motivated in their career. Huh. He, I would say though that this connection and her connection with him is causing the swords and she's having stress because of her connection with him. There's something in the way that they communicate with each other. Let's see. What are you guys saying? He's from Emily in Paris. Okay, yeah. Sage Moon Shakira is a Taurus rising sister. <laughs> I believe. Oh, I felt bad that she went through all that. I know, right? Me too, Sage Moon. With her man. So that was like so sad. Love her coming out on top though. I love that. Love that, Sage Moon. Great. Great contribution there. Gigi says she's an Aries rising. Okay, interesting. Gigi, I think she's an Aries sun. I think y'all are both, I think y'all, I think y'all are both saying kind of the right thing here. Gigi, I think she's an Aries sun and I think she's a Taurus rising, I think. Okay, so Lucian is the sun in Gemini, moon, and Libra. Thank you, Vampirella. Stop it. Okay, Gemini, sun, Libra, moon. Guys, swords are associated with air signs. <gasps> Vampirella, thank you for the confirmation. I love when like you can see the people um, in the cards, like in the cards and stars, like my podcast says, um, when you can see the people represented by like the different suits, um, and it's really referring to their sign, which is basically just their energy. 
That is so cool. Oh my God. I, I'm geeking out. So that makes a lot of sense. That's just confirmation times 10, basically that this Knight of swords energy is about his, the way that he operates in life. I would say you really don't want someone to be putting you in this type of vibe now, because it's the eight of swords, not the nine of swords. I wonder if it's just kind of like she's triggered, but he's not really doing anything. Um, we'll get a clarifier here. If it was nine of swords, I'd be like, oh, she needs to get away from him. But because it's eight of swords, it's almost more about like, I don't know, like he triggers something in her that maybe she needs to kind of work through. And I want to get a clarifier for sure, but okay. He is a Gemini sun moon in Libra. So he is definitely the knight of swords because this is swords are always air sign energy. And he's like kind of a younger, like I think like late twenties, maybe early thirties. Um, the knights are usually like middle aged on to like on the young side. So like young adult type of thing. So, Hmm. Let's get a clarifier, but wow. Okay. Sorry. I'm just like kind of lost. <laughs> I'm all, getting lost in the tarot sauce here. Just kind of that blows my mind. He's very air energy. And she obviously gets that about him because she's with him all the time. Let's get a clarifier on why does this, why does the Knight of Swords, why does he cause her stress, Eight of Swords energy? Or what about the connection triggers her stress? Ooh, okay. Two of cups in the reverse. Mm. So two is about being a pair, right? It's about, I just got goosebumps confirmation. It's about commitment. This is truly finding someone that you believe is like your soulmate, someone that you love. You know, two of cups, this is again, the commitment card. This is really committed. I think that there's a little bit of a commitment issue between them whether like if they are committed, she doesn't fully trust it yet or even worse. Um, no, I'm going to say they're, never mind because it's the eight of swords. I'm going to say they're committed, but she doesn't trust it. She's having a hard time trusting because knight of swords, uh, air sign people, they can come across as a little bit more like, not like, I guess like more like shallow or like they don't always talk about their feelings really deeply. So even if they are committed, they may seem like their attention goes in a lot of places or whatever, depending on that particular person. But there's something about him that she just doesn't know if he's going to be able to stay committed, that he's going to be able to make such a deep commitment, which is what she really wants, because that's what she felt she had at one point with Gerard. I believe that was his name. Um, but yeah, I think once you go through such a betrayal like that, it's natural to be a little bit wary of like just not wanting that to happen again. So I think she's like on high alert, basically. She's just kind of like watching everything. Mm. I almost want to like do an advice card for her now that she's watching or anything. But it's like, how can she move past that Eight of Swords energy? Because the fact that this came in reverse means that like this is there, but she's just not believing it. I wonder if he's more trustworthy than she believes. What are you guys saying? Let's see. Wow. Okay. Vampirella says Lucian's Venus is in Gemini. I mean, he couldn't be more King of Swords. He couldn't be more air sign energy. Now the Venus in Gemini, that is somebody who, you know, they either just love like a variety of people or if they're committed, they love to do a variety of things, but there's a very, it's, it's like energy of like, always want to have fun. So, you know, someone could feel insecure that like someone with a Gemini and Venus won't ever be like fully satisfied just with one person. Like those are different, I think, fears that come up around that type of placement. Vampirellis as well as Mars is an Aries. So that might be it. Okay. Well, also, thank you for all this good info, Vampirella. Um, his Mars is in Aries and her son is in Aries. So they have that Mars sun connection. So he's definitely very attracted to her and vice versa. You know, Mars is like passion. So there's a lot of that there. It's like a magnet. Um, that's interesting. Okay. Gigi thinks it feels like PR. Vampirella says, I don't trust Lucian. I think some of Shakira's friends say she's falling too hard now. I think she's vulnerable. 
she's definitely in a phase where she would like a two of cups energy with him in the reverse. It's a fear that that again, it's that fear of him hurting her for sure. So if you don't trust him, maybe you're picking up on something too. He's ambitious. Yep. Sun and Aquarius moon in cancer. Okay. I don't think she's healed. She's vulnerable. She cares or romantic. Okay. Interesting. Oh, PG, that's what you said. Sun in Aquarius, moon in Cancer. Okay. Shakira has some prominent Aries placement. I don't know where it is, but I was thinking she was an Aries sun. Thanks for the clar clarification there. Sun. Yeah. If you have your moon in Cancer with the moon in its home sign of Cancer, like, you're going to be extremely emotional and nurturing and just really someone who wants love. That makes sense. Okay. Sage Moon says, did anyone actually watch Emily in Paris? So I watched the first season and I loved it. And then I never watched the second season and my brother and his wife watched it. And they said, it's not as good as the first, but if you like Emily in Paris, like if you really enjoyed it, it's something that you can like, you can have the second season on like the background while you like maybe do something else. So I was like, okay, no taken, not as good as the first one. Um, but definitely like not bad for like a Saturday afternoon if you're doing laundry or something, you know, that kind of vibe. Um, scared to start watching it. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Sage Moon, try watching the first season. You'll probably like it given your Scorpio placements. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay. Maybe he's a good time boy instead of one to settle down with. He certainly has that energy here. Let's see if that is more of just fear. And I'm just, I wonder if it's more of just fear of getting hurt because of the eight of swords. So let's do a past, present, future for Shakira and Lucian. <laughs> okay. Past, present, future. Just like overall bird's eye view without their feelings involved or their perceptions. Let's just see like what's going on with them. Okay, when they first got together. Ooh, five of swords in reverse. Ooh, okay. And I do say, ooh, again, whoa. Um, I do not, okay, I do not like him, guys. What? More swords. This is like calculating. Maybe she's feeling eight of swords energy allegedly for entertainment purposes only because that's her intuition. And you guys said that's her friends also saying that five of swords is like my least favorite. One of my least favorite cards to ever pull, especially when it comes to any sort of like friendship reading or relationship dynamic, because this is like dishonesty. This is someone like being a mastermind, but in like a bad way, like not being afraid to like do underhanded things, um, lies, deceit. What the heck? All right. So that was the beginning of the connection. Okay. I'm just going to keep it moving here. What about what came after that? The current energy. Oh, okay. I dropped them. I'm just going to take them. The chariot and the queen of wands. A lot of passion here. This is very, this is actually very good. So it started off like with some dishonesty. And I don't know what that could have been. That could have been a million things. Maybe he lied to, like what comes to mind is like, like maybe he lied saying that he knew her friend or something. Like there's, there was some sort of calculation that he, like he, I think he maybe had his mind made up that he wanted to be with her or something like that. And he maybe, you know, I don't know, did a couple things to make that happen with maybe not the best intentions, like really just wanting to get something out of the connection. That's what, I mean, five of swords is very selfish, but then we have this chariot and the queen. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Hold on. This one's very positive. Yes. But remember how, when I did Travis Kelsey, I got the chariot in reverse, basically referring to this, this phase of his like kind of man about town, you know, a good time boy, as you guys just said, like that phase being over for him in the upright, 
Okay, this makes sense. She's definitely listening to her intuition because in the upright, this is saying that he is that man about town. I think that allegedly for entertainment purposes, I think that there are other people that even if he's not like with them, um, maybe it's like DMs or it's flirtatious things on like Instagram or like, or like, I don't know, like there are things maybe on set fl like flirtations. This is someone who's in their Mars energy. This is that Blanche card um, from Golden Girls or that Samantha Jones card from Sex and the City, you know, just the person who is always kind of out there, um, very Venus and Gemini. He hasn't, he hasn't grown out of that phase yet. Okay. And then she is the queen of wands. She's actually in an era where she really knows herself. She's happy. She is passionate. Um, I love this for her that she's the queen of wands. And what's so weird is that we've got these cards for Taylor and Travis talking about a really happy, positive connection. The only thing that's off here is his energy, which is still a little bit, I guess, like, I don't know, un uncommitted, untamed. So that's confirming this in reverse. She has fears for a reason. And this is also, this being the energy of when they first got together, lying, being underhanded, this could be someone making a commitment, like him being like, I only want to be with you, like that, saying a bunch of things, but knowing full well that you're still in this energy. That's really sad. Oh my gosh. Shakira just needs to like, I don't know, like be with like, like a banker or something or like just so, someone not in the entertainment industry just someone with like a job that's just like straightforward i just think that yeah i don't know i just get a feeling she really needs to be like a down-to-earth person okay so that's the present what's next for them what's coming in the future and then i'm going to catch up with what you guys are saying because y'all are spilling some good tea over here in the comments what's next for shakira and this Lucian Lavis Count sounds like a little scoundrel now. Uh, what's going on or what's coming next in the future? Ace of Swords. Um, this is a victory. I need to get a clarifier. He has been at swords throughout this entire reading. I don't like what's coming through right now, though. A victory for him. The Empress in reverse. Oh. Okay. If I were her friend, and if her friends are saying this, they are good friends, I would say get the heck away from him right now. Um, allegedly for entertainment purposes. Because we have the Ace of Swords for him, which is a victory. So I guess for him, this would be him getting whatever he wants out of the connection could be a combination of publicity, um, attention, and maybe a good time spent with Shakira, one of the most beautiful, talented women in the world. Um, he's going to get his wish. This is him like gaining the upper hand or something, which relationships shouldn't even be like that, right? Um, not good. Not good. He's able to kind of manipulate the situation, get what he wants. Going from the five of swords in the beginning to the ace of swords in the end. Wow. Okay. Very manipulative, just getting your way. Basically, the bad guy winning. I don't like that. And then we have for her the Empress in reverse. This is so sad. Her going from the Queen of Wands to the Empress in reverse. She is the Empress, though. She has that energy. So she is the one that can flip this whole situation. This is just a reading based on, you know, if the situation continues the way it's going now. But tarot, tarot readings are never, you know, you can always change it. You can always change the outcome by changing the way that you act so that you respond to the situation. So she could get out of the situation now, keep her queen of wands energy and not have to go through an empress reverse moment. If she stays though, the way things are allegedly for entertainment purposes, it looks like um, the self doubt kind of all the, the things that she went through before would come back. That is so sad. I hate that so much. I was really hoping that this was going to be like, completely different. So again, trust your intuition. Dang. The fact that she already had the eight of swords feeling for, about him. All right. What are you guys saying? Let's see. Oh, my leg is going to sleep. I'm not used to sitting on like a bed like this. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh, my leg is falling asleep. Dang. All right. Let's see. What are you guys saying? 
I hope so. He's totally not in-game material. He's not. He's definitely not Vampirella. Okay. Vampirella says, sorry if I'm asking another request. No, it's okay. You. That's what we're here for. I'd like to know if you can do a reading on Tom Hiddleston. Ooh, and why he hasn't married his fiance after two years, even though she had his baby in 22. Wait, I thought I saw. Oh, wait, no, that was Calvin Harris. Never mind. I saw something about Calvin Harris's wife, like saying that she listens to Taylor Swift when Calvin Harris leaves the room. I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> Tom, yes, we can do that with Tom Hiddleston. Sage Moon. Okay, I'll give it a try. Let me know what you think of Emily in Paris, Sage Moon. Um, yeah, not the swords again. It, this is just not a good reading when it comes to this guy. He is no bueno. Even his placements make me suspicious. <laughs> Gigi says, I'm all air, but even his placements, that's hilarious. But Gigi, we know you. You're good people. Um, I would say a guy with all air placements, until they reach an age of maturity, um, I would just, you know, definitely look twice. Make sure that, you know... Cause just air is just, it's not, you know, goes from place to place. Doesn't really, it's just how it is. All right. Let's see. Can you see the challengers movie, how it will do at the box office and how it is in day will be perceived afterwards? Absolutely. Okay. So let's do a quick one and then we're going to wrap it up at 10 central. Cause that's a good solid couple hours but we will get through as many of the other requests as possible. Thank you guys for all these good requests. I love it. This is so fun. I feel like this has just been like flying by. Okay. Uh, what was, okay, here we go. So Tom Hiddleston, why he hasn't married his fiance after two years, even though she had his baby in 2022. All right, let's see. And they're still engaged. Interesting. All right, let's see. Tom Hiddleston and his fiance. Why haven't they gotten married? Allegedly for entertainment purposes. Let's see if something comes through. Maybe they're just, I don't know. The kind of people that don't want to be married. Not sure. Let's see. Why haven't they gotten married? Two of swords. Stop it guys. Okay. This is like my hands are tied. Oh my God. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking like maybe they just don't believe in it or something. Um, there's a reason. Uh, this two of swords, this card is about not being able to make a decision. There is this feeling of I don't want to leave, but I don't know if I want to be here forever. That's really sad. Um, I would say they should break up then. Um, because this feels like both of them are stuck. Two of swords is a stuck energy. It's about uh, being stuck in your head, but it's also about feeling stuck in life. So there's a lot of thinking going on on both sides. And I think that both of them feel this way. I don't think it's just one or the other. We'll pull a couple cards to clarify that. But to me, it feels like both feel a little bit stuck. And this two of swords energy, it's like disempowered. Like all you have to do is put down the two swords the way this is, the person has to put down the two swords and then they should take off their blindfold. But they're holding the swords and they have a blindfold on. So they're like, I'm stuck. I can't see. But it's like, you are not stuck. Oh my gosh, Sonny's coming into the frame. Yes. He's so sleepy. We had two good runs today. Okay. All right. Interesting. Let's get a clarifier there on this two of swords for Tom Hiddleston and his fiance. Let's get uh, her feelings. Let's get his feelings just to kind of see if both of them are in two of swords energy. Let's see Tom Hiddleston's feelings about his fiance right now. Allegedly for entertainment purposes. Three of cups. <sighs> this is getting messy. Uh, okay. Okay. And I don't know Tom Hiddleston's dating history at all, but this is like this energy of maybe wanting to be with multiple people. This is about, you know, the three of cups is like, there's some cheesecake here. They have a little, little wine in the cup. They're partying. It's like, it's the energy of 
maybe he feels like he wants to be with her, but then he also wonders if there's something with somebody else. It's like there's a third party, three of cups. There's a third person in the connection that shouldn't be there. If you're trying to just have two people there. And his fiance, what are her feelings towards him? Ooh, Eight of Pentacles. She wants to work on the connection. She wants to build something, but she thinks it needs work. This is so interesting. So they're both in this Two of Swords energy of not wanting to walk down the aisle, not wanting to solidify the commitment, but also not wanting to break up, but it's for different reasons. Interesting. For him, it's more... Um, like emotional it's more like i don't know like or maybe there is someone else that he also had like still holds a candle for is still interested in wants to keep his options open there's something weird like that going on with him even if it's just in his mind i don't know so that's like for him it's like that kind of thing of like commitment or whatever but with her it's about wanting to work on the connection and being like, I want us to work on things and for things to get better before we take that next step. Dang. Okay. So that's really, that's what I got <laughs> for why they haven't walked down the aisle yet. Um, hopefully they get on the same page at some point. Cause that stinks to be in the, you know, two of swords energy, just feel stuck. All right. Um, interesting though. Yay. There he is. Oh, and he laid back the other way. <laughs> okay. Let's see how the Challengers movie will do at the box office. <laughs> Sage says, Brit think Lucian is giving scoundrel made me snort. <laughs> uh, and, and you just made me laugh saying that, that you snorted. Oh my God. Sage, that's so funny. Totally. He's an old fashioned scoundrel. A good old-fashioned scoundrel. All right, Zendaya. How is she going to do in, or how is the Challengers movie going to do? How will she be perceived afterwards? Is the Challengers like a, um, is it, <laughs> is the Challengers like some sort of superhero thing? I think so. How is the movie going to do at the box office? Let's see. The star card. It's going to do well. Guys, it's going to do well. It's going to take her star power to an even higher level. Wow. I love that that was the card that we got. I really like her. I love that this is the card, the star card. Wow. It doesn't get more straightforward than that. All right. Well, that's some tarot tea for you. So it's going to do really great. Really, really great. To the point where it's going to elevate her to an even higher level of A-list. Like, pick your own roles type of thing. Write your own salary. Like, write your number down. Like, that kind of thing. Like, just, wow. She's going to be everywhere even more than she has been. Okay. And anything else about how she's going to be impacted Obviously, in a positive way after the star card. Anything else? Also, she's an Aquarius rising. And the star card is associated with Aquarius. So I feel like that also talks about her kind of getting into a new era with Pluto and Aquarius. Um, like a big transformation. So I do think people are going to see her a little bit differently than they have before. Let's see why that is. Really represents her energy coming through here, which is very positive. Ooh, King of Cups. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> so this is an energy of emotional maturity, groundedness, being in love. I wonder if something about her love life, and this would be unrelated, but it's like still kind of happening at the same time, which I guess that's why this is coming through. You know, she is in a really solid relationship. This is talking about maybe like they're going to become more of like the it couple or we're going to see them in more places. Maybe they're going to do more interviews together, maybe a project together after this. This is a very positive love card though coming through. So she has the star and so she's in a period of 
even more fame and prosperity and her love life do even better. Maybe that she's actually going to get married coming up. Let's see. Any other clarifier? Oh, whoa. I'm not going to take all those because they're all flipping. Strong energy around her, though, I'd say. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Nine of Cups. Okay. Wish fulfillment card. What a positive spread. Okay. So she is in a period of blessings, wish fulfillment, positive karma. Um, and this has to do with her career. So fame, her love life going well, and <laughs> her happiness. The next six months are going to be really, really good for her. So I think we're going to see her out and about even more. Maybe we're, there's going to be an announcement that she already got married. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a photo shoot with her significant other, but there's something about just on every level, um, she's going to be celebrated and she's in a period of happiness and it's just going to keep getting better. I really like that for her. Okay, cool. So I guess we'll have to see the challengers. It's going to be a good movie. All right, let's see. A few more minutes here. What is everybody else saying? Allegedly, he's a Virgo rising with all that Gemini and air energy. Oh, the Lucian guy? He could be calculated and a trickster. Tricky with his words. It's giving wordplay and a lot of semantics to me, LOL. Ooh, okay, well, Virgo rising. Sage, when I could see that. Virgo rising men especially can be very... Allegedly from the chamber, but it's only very calculating. Um, because Virgo typically, there, there he is. Virgo typically is, you know, associated with like goodness and like positive things and, and being, oh, now you hear all the other dogs. All right. <laughs> like just being like a healer and stuff. But a Virgo man, when a Virgo man is like in a calculated place because the, Virgo is basically like ruled by Mercury, just like Gemini. So this is someone who's very cerebral. So definitely could be the calculating thing. Wow, Sage Moon. Thank you for pointing that out. So true. So, so true. A lot to think about here. Okay. Um, he's giving me Tom Holland and Pete Davidson vibes. Yes. Trying to date up to boost his career. Oh, Tom Holland too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Melissa says, why did Jessica Alba step down as CCO of the Honest Company all of a sudden? That's a great question. Let's see. Aw, thank you, Michael. You're so sweet. I just saw your comment. Aw. Very sweet husband. Babu says, another awful dude sucking like a vampire out of her Empress energy. <laughs> Mablushin and Shakira. So true. So true, Babalu. All right. Why did Jessica Alba step down? Oh, the whole freaking deck tried to flip. We're not going to take those, but there's some energy. This obviously is not a decision taken lightly. There's like a lot of energy happening here. Why did Jessica Alba step down as the CCO of the Honest Company all of a sudden? Why did she step down? Okay. That one just fell out. We're going to take it. Ten of Cups, something about her family. Happy family. So positive things going on with her family. Five of Swords in reverse. Finding out about some trickery. I'm going to get a few more cards before I interpret because there's like, it's very layered. Queen of Cups in the upright. Beautiful. Okay. Here's what. Allegedly for entertainment purposes only, this is why Jessica Alba, seemingly out of nowhere, stepped down as the CCO of The Honest Company. So her main motivation is the happiness of her family. That makes sense because Jessica Alba is in a place in her life and in her career where she's very successful financially. You know, she doesn't necessarily need to work. Um, and because of that, you know, she's very privileged in the fact that she can spend time with her family at home if that's something that she wants to do. Her kids are getting older. I don't know how older kids are, but they're growing up. And I think sometimes people, especially, you know, when they're busy or they're used to doing a lot, having it on their plates, 
they're like, you know, I would love to spend more time with my family. And so I think she just kind of entered that phase where she's realizing maybe her priorities have shifted. Maybe instead of doing meetings as a, I don't even know what a CCO is, create like creative something officer. I don't even know what a CCO is. But instead of doing um, a meeting as a CCO, she wants to help her daughter with a project or she wants to be there for a special event for her husband. Like it started to compete with her family. And because she has this queen of cups energy as well, which is emotional maturity, she thought about her pri priorities and decided to prioritize her family, to prioritize what she deems most important in her life right now. So it just feels like the right thing for her to put her family first uh, in this moment. It's kind of like she's just over it. She's like, I don't really need to do that anymore. I did it. That was fun. Now I want to do this. I want to really put my energy into this, um, into my family, into spending time there. Also, I think that this was pushed a little bit. Maybe she felt more inspired to take this move now because she found out about some five of swords energy. This is in the reverse because uh, in the upright, this is just like kind of nasty things happening. Um, in the reverse, this is like finding out about those lies, finding out about things that were going on behind the scenes. So I think that she found out about some things going on allegedly for entertainment purposes. I'm not saying that this necessarily is like putting the company in jeopardy. Maybe it is. And she decided I want to prioritize the well-being of my family and I don't want to be in any sort of like scandal or anything that could, you know, negatively impact our finances. Could be that. But there's something that happened that could be as bad as all of that, where, you know, we'll see something going on with the company shortly, or it could be as behind the scenes as finding out that there are people that you've been working with who are, you know, talking behind your back and just basically finding out that the environment isn't really right for you. Like if these people are going to act like this, like, why am I even wasting my time here? I don't need this job. I'd rather be spending time with my family. Anyway, I was just kind of doing this to be nice, like something like that or doing this to be a part of something that I thought was one way and it's not, but it has to do with the deception, something tricksterish that she just kind of realized it brought it to the surface that, you know, what, I don't even want to deal with this basically. Like, all right, then I'm going to go ahead and leave. I've been kind of wanting to leave for a long time anyway. That's what I'm getting here. And she made the announcement during Aries season, which is a time of new beginnings and Mercury retrograde, which is redoing things. So I think that this has been something that's been on her mind for a while. Um, yeah, she just got a little bit of a push from some information that came to light. Allegedly for entertainment purposes only. Okay. And oh my gosh, 959. I'm going to end it there because if I start another one, then <laughs> we'll be here for a little bit longer than our 10 o'clock cut off, but that was really fun. You guys, thank you for all of the awesome comments, all the awesome requests, um, all of the good information on people's birth charts. You guys are amazing. Oh, you added so much like clarity and so many layers to these readings. I love it. And I appreciate it so much. Um, let's see what everybody else is saying. Yeah. Lawyer Moog says one is cheesecake and to eat it too. Exactly. Lawyer Moog. Exactly. Mm -mm, not acceptable. Not the airmen making us look bad. <laughs> Hilarious. Weird. I just feel, oh my God. I want to read all of those comments now. You guys have some spilled some good tea. Hi, Leora. Oh my gosh. Leora says, hi, I'm late, but this is a tennis movie. Wait, but this is a tennis movie, but there is maybe a steamy theme love triangle in the movie. Oh. What? What tennis movie? A steamy theme love triangle in the movie? Lura, what? Hold on. I'm confused, but this is something I want to know. <laughs> uh, wait, apparently they're in a throuple. Are y'all kidding me right now? Chief creative officer. Oh my God. Y'all's tea is the best. This was so much fun. Thank you, TJ. I had a blast too. Ah, oh, thank you, Sage Moon. You're the best. Sending you a big hug. I hope you have a great start to the week. Have a really good Monday. You too, Babalu. Oh my God. A love triangle. This is going to have me thinking for a while now. Okay, Leora, give us a little something to think about. All right, you guys, y'all are the best. This was so much fun. 
send you guys a big hug and I will talk to you soon. I just hope everybody has such a good start to the week. Sending you all the good vibes. All right. Bye everybody. Sweet dreams.